Now, I was asking you guys that what is the work of what is the work of? Tell me. What are we studying? What is the work of? Microprocessors. Now, who will tell you what is the work of microprocessors? What is the work of? Microprocessors. Microprocessor can do arithmetic. Don't fall down. Microprocessor can do different types of works that can be arithmetic, logical, but all of these things has to happen on all of this has to be happen has to be done on binary data the data correct zero or one it has to do all these operations on zero or one so the basic operation that a micro processor does is arithmetic or logical what does it do arithmetic or logical any other thing because of all these different things it can perform any task of this whole universe by this arithmetic and logical operations whenever we talk about a microprocessor the basic herd of it is arithmetic and logical operations and for that we need a circuitry that can do that for us that can do that arithmetic and logical operation for us and that magic unit is known as you know the name already arithmetic and logical unit a l u every microprocessor is having an a l u that is called a l u arithmetic i am not writing it full logic unit what is the full form arithmetic logical unit right now what we will do don't be distracted by that it's very normal now now we are going to draw the architecture of a microprocessor so uh, the time i'm drawing something do draw it along with me right don't worry it's not whistling for you right this is the symbol of ALU this is a symbol of ALU so whenever we are talking of ALU so what does it mean what does an ALU mean what is the meaning of ALU I told you right now <laughs> to provide arithmetic and logical operations on whom that is in whom not on whom on on binary data on binary data now if we talk about the 8085 microprocessor that is a 8 bit microprocessor 8 bit microprocessor and it is a 3 megahertz microprocessor now you know what is the meaning of 3 megahertz microprocessor you know the meaning of 3 megahertz microprocessor everyone is clear with that any doubts in that any doubts correct now you what you would not be knowing is what do you mean by 8-bit microprocessor correct now you must be having a 32-bit microprocessor these days and a 64-bit microprocessor in your computers so when you install your windows 
or when you install your operating system, it asks you 32 bit or 64 bit. Everyone has heard of it? 32 bit or 64 bit? What does that mean? And in such a long span of time, we have done from 8 bits to 64 bits. That's it. We have, we have changed from 3 megahertz to 3 gigahertz. That's a lot. But 8 bit to 64 bit, not too much. You would be thinking like that. But let me tell you what exactly does this mean. What does 8 bit microprocessor mean? When we are talking of 8 bit microprocessor, this is an ALU, as I told you right now. This temp, temporary. Now, whenever we are talking, draw it first of all. This is very important. Everybody, everybody has drawn it. Now, uh, yeah, yeah, right. But again, draw it. Why? Because I'm telling you. Everybody has drawn it. Great. Now, there, you can see the, I have written eight over ALU, eight near this temp, and eight near this ACC. Now, you'll ask me what is ACC and temp. I'll just tell you. And as you can see. Whenever we are putting line, we are cutting it. That means it is a bus. bus. That means it is a bus. bus. Now, what does bus mean? A set of a set of lines. That means it would contain a set of it would contain a set of wires. That wires would carry a set of data. Now, I have written eight over ALU means. This ALU means arithmetic and logic unit. Arithmetic and logical unit, what it will do, it can only process 8 bit data. What it can process? Only 8 bit data. If it gets 9 bit data, it will say, hey, stop right there. I'm leaving the job. <laughs> right? So if you give a 9 bit data, well, practically it's not possible because whenever we are connecting this bus by ALU, this would be of just 8 bits. So you cannot send 9 bits at any point of time. And when, when this bus goes back to this main bus, this is a main bus. So this will also be of 8 bits. So every single line that you can see, this bus that you can see is of how many bits? 8 bits. So, ALU is getting two inputs. You can see this arrow that is going inside. Can you see it? Can you see it? Is it clear now? Right? These are two inputs that are going inside. And this is one output that is going out. If you say 2 plus 2 is equal to? How many inputs are there? In this 2 plus 2, when I am doing 2 plus 2, there are 2 inputs and 1 output. Right? Let's say 2 plus 4 is equal to 6. 
टू एंड फोर आर टू इनपुट टू एंड फोर आर टू इनपुट एंड सिक्स इज वन आउटपुट वेरी एलिमेंट्री आई डोंट नीड टू टेल यू दैट सो द सेम वे इन ए एल यू डेटा देर आर वी कैन अलाउ टू डिफरेंट डेटा एट ए स्पेसिफिक पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम वी कैन ऑल्सो वर्क विद वन सिंगल डेटा हाउ आई विल टेल यू एंड वाई आई विल टेल यू बट एज ए फोन ऑल इट्स इफ यू वॉन्ट टू डू टू प्लस फोर इज इक्वल टू सिक्स वॉट टू प्लस फोर इज इक्वल टू सिक्स कैन आई कैन आई स्विच ऑन द लाइट्स आई एम फीलिंग अ बिट अनकंफर्टेबल आउट है इफ यू डोंट माइंड वे द लाइट स्विचेस ओके लीव डिज इन मैटर हाँ इसको ऑन कर या दैट्स बेटर so that i can see everyone's face right so uh, is it clear is it clear it's clear yes. good enough cool so when we are talking of 8 bit data there would be two inputs and one output and these are connected by bus that means 8 bit of data can be transferred at a single moment of time now why are we using bus what is the usage of bus why cannot we use a single wire because the data would go let's say 01 or 10104567 8 this is a 8 bit data 1 bit 2 bit 3 bit 4 bit 5 bit 6 bit 7 bit 8 bit you know the uh, the meaning of bits you know the meaning of bits do i need to make you understand that i guess you are btech students so i don't think so right great so when i send this data on a single line then first this one would be transferred then this would be transferred then this would be transferred then this would be transferred so eight times the data would be transferred right eight times the data would be transferred that means the speed of the microprocessor would decrease by eight times that's why we are using the same amount of bus that we are using at uh, the, the, the same amount of buses that alu is able to handle that means 8 bit if we are having 8 bit alu then how many bit bus would be there if we are having 16 bit then if we are having 32 then so on and so forth now now let me tell you what is the meaning of acc and tmp these are two registers do you know the meaning of registers uh, before uh, studying registers we have to talk a, a bit about memory and storage what we have to talk about memory and storage that what are these two things when we are talking about microprocessor then the very important thing is what is it speed what is the most important thing if the speed goes down then doesn't matter how big is the microprocessor or how good is the microprocessor it is slow so it won't serve our purpose correct we can do less computation in that fraction of time correct so that microprocessor would lose its importance correct so the most and most important thing that we will be talking out here throughout the whole lecture would be speed 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 how to make the microprocessor as fast as possible right if the microprocessor if the, the the things that we are using it is making microprocessor slow that means you are not using the right technique you are not using the right thing right so when we are talking of memory there are three things in microprocessor there is one thing and in memory there are three things what is it speed speed capacity speed capacity and cost speed capacity and cost now first of all i would like to ask you you are btech students i would like to ask you what is the difference 
between memory and storage. What is the difference between memory and storage? That is not exactly what we need right now. The basic difference. Huh? Storage is permanent. Hmm? Storage needs memory. Storage needs? That's an intelligent answer, but yeah. Uh, what we need out here is storage is the, the, the it's the slowest possible way to store the data storage is the slowest possible way and the most inexpensive most inexpensive inexpensive means cheap, cheap. cheap. the cheapest way to store a data but at the same time, it is the slowest way to save a data, right? It is the slowest way to save a data. So when we are talking about, when we are talking about the, the, the amount of storage, the amount of storage increases. When we are talking about, when we are talking about a hard disk, it can be one terabyte, 500 GB, one terabyte, two terabytes, I mean, these hard disks are there in the uh, market right now, right? One terabyte is a normal thing right now, correct? In laptops, you are getting 500 GB as a standard, right? And it is in inexpensive. But have you heard of, uh, you must have heard of RAM. Why don't we use 80 GB of RAM? <laughs> Why don't we use it? If, if we increase it from 1 GB to 2 GB, the because it is expensive, it is faster, it is expensive. But the basic difference between storage and memory is that microprocessor never ever interacts with storage. Microprocessor, the microprocessor says that, hey guy, you are not of my standard. Go away, I will not talk to you. I am the king, you are my slave. Right. So the microprocessor never talks to or never gets the data directly from the storage. It uses certain devices, it uses certain media, it uses certain via medium to transfer the data from storage to microprocessor. Because microprocessor, as I told you, it can, it can compute at a very, very fast speed that I told you, 1 gigahertz. 10 gigahertz, 10 gigahertz processor are there, but it's not for normal usage right now. So 1 gigahertz, 2 gigahertz, 3 gigahertz, they are there. But do you think that the storage, your hard disk is able to cope up with that speed? It can never cope up with that speed. Now, uh, I would not like you to do this calculation, but just think of 8 bits. 8 bits, right now we are using 64 bits. So 64 bits data, right? 64 bits into 10 raised to power, 10 raised to power 12, 10 raised to power 12. How many bits would be transferred in one second? How many bits would be transferred in one second? And right now the speed of data that we are using if you would have transferred in your pen drive or your, uh, your external hard disk, that would be somewhere around from 5 Mbps to maximum 10 Mbps. Or maybe some are there that provide 15 Mbps. A any more faster devices? Huh? 25? Huh? 50? Uh, is it equal to uh, 64 raised to power 10, uh, uh, sorry, 64 into 10 raised to power 12? Is it anywhere near to that? So do you think the storage is able to interact with microprocessor with a good efficiency? No, because the storage is made to be bigger, but at the same time, it is slower. Because it is slower, it is less inexpensive. 
correct in the first class in the first class sir told us about the rpm of the hard disk 7200 rpm 1500 rpm 1300 rpm told us about them so they are higher the speed the better the transfer rate SCSI hard disks are not available to you these days I mean it would be available might be but they are very fast but again they are not but they are again very uh, very expensive right and when those kind of hard disks are not available to you and still that hard disk is anywhere nowhere I should say nowhere near to the speed of RAM and I would say that RAM is not a fast memory it is also not the fastest way to store a data RAM is also not a fast way to store a data the fastest way to store a data is in registers I'll be coming to registers now when we talk of the the hierarchy of uh, of the of the devices then the fastest is registers or then SRAM then DRAM then go on to storage storage can be of maybe one terabyte right it can be of one terabyte one terabyte RAM you can say 2 GB this is the DRAM is actually dynamic RAM what does that mean dynamic RAM now dynamic RAM is slower than the static RAM the static RAM is much more uh, bigger and it's much more expensive and again it is much more it is much more faster but the amount of the these capacity the capacity is much more less so the the DRAM whereas it can be of 2 GB when we talk of SRAM it can be 2 MB have uh, when you when you when you uh, purchase your laptops when you purchase your laptops there is a thing written 2 MB L2 cache right cache so the cache memory is SRAM so it goes 2 MB maybe 4 MB but not more than that the more this SRAM is the faster the system can be but again these days the uh, the, the manufacturers of these microprocessors they are very intelligent they have very good uh, ways of computing these things so that uh, they can actually put the cost as low as possible for the microprocessor and again do not reduce the working of that microprocessor because they they only give you that much amount of that much amount of space that you would be needing not more than that if they give you a lot of space this whole auditorium is of 240 or 230 as I was told uh, the capacity of this sort but there are only 70 75 students out here so doesn't matter how big the auditorium is I will not be able to use it right so if I give the microprocessor let's say 10 MB L2 cache what will happen it will be waste because at any point of time you would not be able to use it but if I reduce the amount of this SRAM or what you call like cache memory then what will happen again and again what will let, let's say you are going to a doctor you are going to a doctor or let's say you are going somewhere where again and again you have to interact so you come into the room as as soon as the room it fills up the oldest one to sit out there or the one who is not required is sent out and the new one who is required is made to sit in that room then again if he uh, he has done its work then again it has to go out then a new person has to come in so all the time microprocessor what he will be doing he will be sending someone out and sending someone in and then doing one thing then sending someone out then sending someone in then one thing then again sending someone out then again and so on and so forth so all the time he's sending what is that sound of oh my god 
sometimes these topics get so interesting that I forgot where my mic is. Yeah. So uh, all the time, microprocessor, what it will be doing? It will be sending the data in and out of the memory. So will it increase the speed or decrease the speed? Decrease. I need the feedback from you. It will decrease, decrease the speed. What it will do? It will decrease. decrease the speed. So we use that much space that the, us the, the user would be requiring and we only give that much space that is required so that if we give a lot of space, it doesn't matter. At a certain point of time, if you are just uh, using your Internet Explorer, uh, no one uses it these days. If you are using Google Chrome, <laughs> being very true, uh, if you use Google Chrome, then, then uh, and, and you just use Google Chrome on your laptops or your desktops, and you increase the RAM to 4 GB or 8 GB, does that make any difference to your system? You, the, the page would be opening by the same speed, right? Does that make any difference to your uh, computing experience? No. Because you are not able to utilize it. Are you? You're not able to utilize it. So it hardly matters. It's like carrying a 15 liters bottle with you to school. Will you be able to utilize it? No. <laughs> if you take two liters bottle or one liter bottle, that would be more than enough for you. You can fill it. If you, if you, if you, if you take a 200 ml bottle, you'll be again and again running to fill it then sitting in class, then again going, going to fill it, then again sitting in class. That's the same thing that happens in microprocessor. Clear? So, what are registers? What are registers? This is the fastest way to store a data in any system. Fastest. It nearly works with the speed of microprocessor. Nearly. Again, it's sometimes it's not as fast as microprocessor also. But maximum of the time, it matches the speed and it doesn't make the microprocessor slower. So the register is the fastest way to store the data. And if we are talking about, if we are talking about 8085 microprocessor, so that is having one, two, let me count it, one, two, Three, um, one, two, maybe eighty. Sorry, sixty-four bits of register. That's it. Approximately, I'm just giving you an approximation. One terabyte, two GB, two MB, sixty-four bits. See the difference. How? These things change when we change the amount of money that you are spending, the speed that we are getting, and the storage that we are getting. How these things differ in a system. So the registers are the fastest way to store a data in any, any kind of computer system. Nothing is faster than this. Nothing. Right? Got it? Any doubts in memory? Answer? Yeah. Sorry? Uh, the, uh, it is the hardware. The hardware is much more complex because it makes uh, it, it works on TTL, transistor transistor logic. Uh, you actually we have to make you understand what is TTL for that because SRAM works on TTL. So TTL is very difficult to uh, manufacture and it makes it much more uh, much more expensive. And at the same point of time, it makes it much more faster. So generally, if you are talking about SRAM, that is inside the microprocessor these days. SRAM is inside the microprocessor and the connection of SRAM is made by very, very, very less, very small resistance, the, the materials that are having very small resistance. The connections are made by that, maybe gold or silver, by these devices, right? So that there is no lag of communication, right? So SRAM and registers are into the microprocessor, DRAM 
is outside when we are talking about microprocessors, and storage definitely it is out from the microprocessors, right? In uh, if we talk about if we talk about if we talk about microcontroller, storage is often absent. Microcontroller, the storage is often absent because I told you it has to be very small. So it works by using the memory itself, no storage, maximum of the time. Because we cannot say that all the time it is working like this or that, maximum of the time. Correct? Shall we move forward? Correct? Move forward? Great. Now, I was talking about accumulator. This is actually accumulator. You can write it down. A double C accumulator. What is it? Accumulator. Accumulator. Write it down. This is of 8 bits. That means it can store 8 bits. This is a register. What is it? A register. You know what a register is now? You know what is a register? Any doubts? Great. And this is a temporary register. Temporary register. Again of how many bits? Eight bits. Written down? Done? Both guys are very much tired because of the soldering that you did last night. That's why I need to drink this thing so that I, my eyes are always open and I can teach you the whole day. Right? Generally, that energy level is much more than what I'm having right now, but I think you are getting everything that what I am telling you, right? Am I are you able to understand what I'm teaching? Yes. Cool. First day, first lecture. How many of you thought, hey, what are these guys thinking? Can you raise your hands? Anyone of you who thought, okay, this is very elementary. I know what is resistance. I know what is current. How many of you, you thought it? A lot of guys thought it, right? And in the second lecture, did you got to know something new? And in third lecture, how was it? Everything was new? And yesterday, oh my God, this is different. And today? Yeah. Okay. You know, uh, if if the first day I wouldn't have taught you all those things, then today at this point of time you would not be able to understand anything that we are doing out here. And the students, I was I was I was up till quite late, and we both were up till quite late. We were we were just talking about what exactly mistakes that you did. Then uh, the maximum mistakes that we came around with were because of the students who missed their classes. I'm not blaming you guys because many of you had many examinations, some viva or something, some quizzes. Because of that you missed your classes. But the guys who missed the classes, what mistakes do they made? They took the capacitor and put it in the wrong way. They didn't know that it is a polar device. That means it has a plus and a minus. A lot of guys have done this mistake. I was all the time <laughs> taking a capacitor out, filming it, and then putting it back. A lot of guys have put in the transistor at the wrong place. The base is at emitter, emitter is at base, and so on and so forth. So uh, you have to be attentive in class because you know if you don't understand something right now, you will not be able to understand the topics that have been told to you in further classes. So that's why we started very slow so that you understand every single thing. Even if they, there's a dumbest student of this world who's sitting out here, you'll be able to understand everything that I'm teaching. Am I correct? Right. So in the first class, you might have thought, oh my God, what is he teaching? And 
but study and steadily you will go forward to this thing and by all these things that we are teaching can you can you think that anyone can make a robot in three days <laughs> microprocessor is taking this much time how much time will a, uh, a server and an actuator and sensors would do we will move on to the uh, actuators also today actuators and more on sensors how the sensors work after this microprocessor now uh, going on a uh, lot of talks that we have done uh, we are going uh, shall I leave you at one like we did yesterday are you having the stamina to stand one more hour perfect right because I don't want to give a lot of breaks today because today is the last day and we cannot compensate in any ways and this room would be locked at maximum by 530 as you saw yesterday so uh, let's concentrate on the topic again coming back I told you the registers accumulator and temporary registers ALU everything done bus done now Whenever I put a R, R, can you see it? Can you see it? Very tiny. So it is instruction register. What is it? Instruction register. And this is this is instruction decoder. What is it? Instruction decoder. instruction register and instruction decoder got it now what is the work of instruction register and instruction decoder anyone any guesses hmm? as I told you the data comes in a microprocessor but what has to be done on that data has to be told to the microprocessor by a code by, by, by an instruction right now that instruction that has to be given to the microprocessor is in a decoded format the instruction no worries keep it down so the instruction that has to be given to the microprocessor is in a in which format binary but a decoded uh, sorry encoded format in which format encoded format or no doubt whatever we are doing with a microprocessor is gonna be in 0 and 1 but at the same time this can be binary sometimes it could be hexadecimal right it can be hexadecimal it can be any other form of uh, these uh, the, the, these uh, codes right you know what is hexadecimal what is it 16 octa right so the the microprocessor sometimes uh, the data that reaches to that uh, microprocessor can be in the form can be decoded into all these different things and it has to be sorry encoded in these things and it has to be decoded in terms of ALU to understand all these things these days when I go out from VIT I'm from North India I'm from New Delhi if you know so I, I, I only know Hindi and English moreover so people are Anna something like that I don't know what they say so, so I'm not able to understand because 
they have encoded it into their language the ideas that they have in their mind they have encoded in their language and they are throwing it down to me and I'm like oh my god what is he saying so if we give that instruction to the ALU without decoding it what would happen the ALU will be standing like me <laughs> what is happening <laughs> where am I <laughs> right so so that that instruction has to be decoded and there's a device in the microprocessor that decodes it now why a register why a register is there to store the instructions why is it there I'll tell you whenever a data reaches accumulator whenever data reaches accumulator then a data reaches temporary register and the, the, the thing that has to be done reaches instruction register there would be something that would be there in ALU the ALU might be doing something am I right ALU might be doing something and then at the same point of time the data would go inside and the instruction register would go all the way from instruction decoder to ALU right so everything happens synchronized and at the same point of time maybe the data or the instruction reaches before the data right it reaches before the data or it reaches a bit after the data or it just stays for a second or second is a long duration but maybe it, it it lasts for a very short duration in which the ALU might not be able to do the calculation properly it can be so to make that data available for ALU to understand we have a register that stores that instruction for a fraction of a second and by a fraction of a second I should say fraction of milli or uh, milliseconds I should say or even smaller unit of time so that stores the data until the next data is uh, next instruction is there in the register and whenever the ALU says okay next next one next one next one next one so the data or the instruction comes into that register and a next instruction is executed correct now let's do a calculation let's do a very simple calculation of 2 plus 4 is equal to or let's increase the complexity let's make it 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 can we do it can we do it cool uh, uh, write it down uh, 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 give me the answer hmm? sure let me do it uh, right correct 20 now how the microprocessor would do the same thing we have to know because as I told you that ALU the first work is to do is to do arithmetic is to do arithmetic operations then it does the logical operations there is a logical operation inside this formula itself 4 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 what is it Huh? or no or anything else equals is a logical operation equals equal is a which operation and arithmetic uh, what are the arithmetic operations can anyone tell me plus minus and division these are the things correct and logical operation Fine. now moving forward what would happen is whenever a data comes to a or whenever a data has to be processed the first data the first packet of that data would come to accumulator accumulator is the most important register in any microprocessor 
अगर कोई आपसे सॉरी इंग्लिश इफ समन आस्क यू द व्हाट इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट रजिस्टर दैट यू यूज इन माइक्रो प्रोसेसर व्हाट इज इट यू स्ट्रेट अवे क्लोज योर आईज एंड सेज से हे एक्यूमुलेटर एक्यूमुलेटर इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज इट इंटरेक्ट्स द मोस्ट द मोस्ट फ्रीक्वेंटली विद द एएलयू it 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 is the most used register and then the temporary register and then there are some more register that i'll draw for you right now now so whenever we whenever i say, i said that whenever a data comes it goes to accumulator so two will come and go to where will it go accumulator fine then let me raise it then we will say okay two is that then four will go to four will go to four will go to temporary register right now what is there in accumulator two what is there in temporary register four now we will send the plus what will we send plus and that plus would go to and it will give this to and this alu has 2 and 4 already because that's in the register right so if it is in the register that means it is there with alu right so as soon as this plus sign enters what will it do 2 plus what will it be 6 So six would go to the bus, right? And then it again enters the accumulator. This is the fun of it. It again enters the accumulator. Where does it enter? Accumulator. Got it? Then what happens? Let me erase it first of all. So, what do we have in accumulator right now? Six. six. Then again, what will come? Six. six. Where will it enter? Temp. Then what will enter? Where will it go? Where will it go? Instruction decoder से decode हो गया. It will go to ALU. Correct? It will go to ALU. What will be the result? Where will it go? Again ALU. Where will it go? Again accumulator. First time it added them. Let's delete it once more. Are you comfortable with my accent? Everyone, are you comfortable with my accent? Good. Now, what do we have in accumulator? What do we have now? Where will it go? Then what will happen? Where will it go? Then where will it go? What will happen? Where will it go? Now, what will happen? Now what will happen? Tell me. Now what will happen? Twenty hmm? will. Tell me. When we will go to ten? Okay. Twenty plus zero. There is no zero. Is there any zero? Then what will happen? Equal to will go. Equal to will go. To the instruction register. To the instruction register. Then. Then when the equal to goes to the instruction decoder and it will go to ALU, then it will say accumulator. Now you are done. Now remove the data. Give me the data and it will go to the bus. It will put it on the bus. it would be put it 
it would be sent on the bus and then the work of ALU is over. The work of ALU is over. Whatever device would be there to collect that data would collect it or it will disappear after the next thing happens. Correct? So this is how a microprocessor works. Got it? Now we have learned the arithmetic and logical operation that it happens in in microprocessor. Everybody, everyone is understanding? Everyone is understanding? Is it inter interesting? Yes. Are you liking it? Yes. Great. Yeah? Good? Good enough? Good? Great. Now, moving forward. Let's delete it. Delete this uh, blah blah blah. Yeah. Good. Now, what will happen? Uh, I'm not going too fast, right? I'm fine, right? Great. <coughs> now, uh, there's something that I forgot to make. So, I'm making this box. It is not so big, so I'm not able to write anything inside. But what you will write inside, I'm telling you. Those of you have a better pen than mine. It might look fancy to you, but it's not. <laughs> that one is better. <laughs> right. What you will write is flag. Oh, I am sorry. I told you this is this is not I what I want. Say, hey, start working. Oh, it's not working. So what will we write is flag flag register what is it flag register what is it flag register can I delete it good written it now 8085 if you talk about it has how many flag registers it has five type of flags you don't need to dig inside too deep there are uh, the, the advanced microprocessor the uh, the more the flags but uh, as if for now you need to concentrate on five flags now what are flags what are flags and why do we need it in a micro processor? Why do we need it? It denotes something. It denotes something. The flag of India denotes something. It denotes about <laughs> when you wear a, when you raise a black flag and he says, "I'm on strike." Or when, when, when someone, uh, when a war is going on, then you raise a white flag and you say, Hey, I surrender. Flag means something. To show something. India's flag is having three colors and one, um, one, uh, one wheel in the center that denotes, orange denotes, what? Green means prosperity, white means peace, orange means? So, flags mean something. You ha see, uh, see, uh, you. Uh, I should not be telling you all this in this lecture, but uh, make this a point. You should always remember your roots, otherwise you will not be able to move forward. All the countries that uh, sir was also telling, I guess, that has left their language behind, that has left their language behind that don't know their culture, that don't know their roots, they're not able to move forward. Russia, Japan, in Japan if you go hardly, when the, means, uh, all the people are speaking Japanese, hardly any in English. If you go to Russia, no one knows English. Go to Germany, German engineers, you have heard about German engineers? You not heard? Okay, tell me, where is Mercedes made up of? Audi? BMW? 
Uh, Rolls Royce is British, but huh? Volkswagen, Germany. All the best companies are there in Germany. So German engineers are one of the best engineers, and none of them speak English. Go to YouTube, type Mercedes Benz. Why I'm telling you and why I know it because I own a Mercedes Benz, and I, I generally go to that place. I, I love the technology that they make, but those foolish people, they always put it in their German language, and I'm not able to understand anything. <laughs> and they make very good innovations, and they then they dub it, and then I hear it, and sometimes I feel it very annoying. I, oh my God, they are not they are hiding something from me. But but at the end of the day, they know what their roots are they know what their culture is so don't ever forget your culture never it will leave it will lead to your loss only never going back going back to the topic where were we flags now flags are used to denote different kinds of things that are there happening inside the ALU what is it what is it what is it Flags, what do they denote? They denote something. <laughs> they denote something. I haven't told you what they denote. But they denote something. Right? Flags are used to denote something that is going on inside the ALU. There are five kinds of flag. The first flag, write it down. Write it down. The first flag is Z flag. What is it? It is Z flag. Written down? Have you written down the Z flag? Z flag? Write down zero flag. What is it? Zero, Z E R O, zero flag. What is it? Zero flag. Now, what would happen if the ALU gives an output zero, 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 zero? You would think that nothing is the output. The microprocessor would think, hey, you're not giving any output. I'm waiting for you. Right. If the microprocessor gives 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, all the 8 bits are 0, then you will think, what is a 0? 0 is not a value. 0 is no current or no, no flow of electrons on all those 8 lines. So you will think that maybe ALU is dead or it has gone mad or it is playing with me. Right? So, it has to tell you, all, let's say, 2 minus 2, answer is? It will give the answer? Then you will think? It has gone mad. Right? So, you need these flags to denote what is going inside the microprocessor or inside the ALU, I should say, at a specific moment of time where a complex kind of situation arises, where a confusing kind of situation arises or where something which we need to denote otherwise that that operation is false. Correct? Got it? Why do we use flags? You got it? Now this is one flag that I have told you. The other flag is parity flag. Write it down. Parity flag, parity, P A R I T Y. Now, uh, if I talk about all these flags and what do they mean? I've told you about zero. Parity flag, even if I tell you the reason of uh, putting up the parity flag, it will take a lot of time. It is for error correction. If there is an error in output, 
it is used to correct it so just write it down when the number of write it down when the number of when the number of zero oh sorry when the number of one is even when the number of one is even in the output or the result the flag is set the flag is set flag is set means the flag is risen the flag bit is set to one right so that means the flag is set we will always always be using these terms set or reset set reset set reset set means one reset means zero right set means one and reset means zero got it so when the number of one is even in an any calculation that bit uh, that the parity is said to be is said to be set if the number of one is is the now converse of it the number of one I want you to speak because I want you to get these technical languages into your tongue so when the tell me when the number of in any or result is odd then the flag is perfect then there's one flag that's called carry sorry carry flag C that is C flag there's a flag called C flag that is called carry flag C A double R Y flag carry flag when there is any carry operation when there's any carry operation in during the calculation inside the ALU this flag is set otherwise it is reset write it down have you donated these your shoes <laughs> I thought if you are donating then donate both of them Don't worry, I'm not hiding, I'm out here. Then there's carry flag, C Y, oh sorry, uh, A C, A C flag. That is auxiliary carry, auxiliary carry. And it is set when the third bit carries something on the fourth bit when the third bit sends a carry on the fourth bit then it is set otherwise it is reset write it down how many flags have we done last flag If I if I make you understand all these things, we would be running out of time. Abhi, for this time in robotics, uh, don't worry about all these because this is specific to uh, the microprocessor. So if you go on to the 8086, that is a better one than uh, 8085. It is having much more uh, flags than this one. So this is just for information that yeah, these things are there. The last one, keep quiet, please is the sign flag when the output is negative then it is set otherwise it is reset the sign flag sign s i g n s flag 